Okay, I'm continuing to unpack, um, unbox the books from Publisher Spotlight. Um, I got the two, bo two boxes and we're like halfway through the first box. Um, and this one is called Underground, Subway Systems Around the World by Yi Juk Kim. And um, I live in Boston, so we have a subway system. And it's, it's like a little confusing because that's Boston for you not well marked, there's not always um, elevators or <laughs> escalators um, when you um, transfer lines, but um, it is great because it, it, it goes a lot of places. And I love that we have one that's attached to my uh, suburb that brings us into Boston. And so this shows us subway systems that are probably <laughs> more modern and more efficient than mine in Boston. Um, Beijing. I actually wrote on it back in 1982 um, when I visited Beijing, and it was very short then. It just was like three stops or four stops. Uh, London. I think I've been on London's. Madrid. I haven't been. Mexico City. Moscow. New York. I might have been once. I'm actually scared of the New York subway because I don't understand it. Paris. I've been on that one. Seoul. I have not. Sydney. And Tokyo. Tokyo, I used to, I lived in Tokyo for six months, or no, I'm sorry, six weeks, and I had to take the subway into work. So, yeah, and I have to say, um, most subways, even when they're in foreign languages, are more, can be more logical than, than the Boston one. But, um, here's Beijing. So, yeah, the, they've been expanding their subway so like it was very short when I was there like 30 years ago no more than 30 years ago um oh this is cool they have like these shorter pages of information it, it definitely gives you a feel of the subway too because it has you know a lot of people um and in Madrid you have like you know sort of someone performing um, and so it serves as a hide and seek, which is fun because it, it's definitely like full, like your eye is, doesn't know where to focus on. So it's like a game, but also you learn about each subway system. So it's an interactive book and, you know, this shorter page, shorter, both the shorter page to the longer page, um, the backside of the shorter page is where you find the hide and seek, which is like a Where's Waldo. Um, anyway, that's fun. Yeah, the pushers. Um, that that looks like a great way to travel, armchair travel, and learn about subway systems all over the world. The next one is Escape. One day we had to run. So that seems like a refugee story. Um, and definitely has a lot of drama. Um, just built into the cover, so it's a very well designed image, written by Ming and Wa, so two first names, illustrated by Carmen Vela. Um, yeah, already feels like you can um, understand the story just from the cover. Throughout history, ordinary people have been forced to leave their families and homes because of war famine, slavery, intolerance, economic and political upheaval, or climate change. So this is stories of escape. And you know, sadly, this is a story that, oh, the publisher here is Lontana. The publisher for Underground, which I forgot to find, it is Cicada Books. Um, and so back to escape, it's just a story of, um, you know, refugees, really. And so it's sort of a universal sad story, um, but it's going to highlight the various um, points in history where people felt the need. And you know what? You can add, you know, Afghanistan to this list. And it's definitely like nonfiction, but like more advanced, like there's a lot of text. And you know, the material that the subject matter is, um, you know, it's, it's more serious. So they're 
sort of defining words. Um, and in it, they're telling, I think, specific stories and from all over the world and also throughout history because there's an underground railroad. So it's just the different ways people had to escape. So this looks, um, this looks like a really well done, important story. A Million Dots is next. And that is by Sven Volker. And let's see who the publisher is. Cicada Books. Cicada has this really, um, like, sort of graphic style of illustration. Like, very, not cartoony, but it's a very strong graphic style. I think that, and whereas, like, L Lantana has a little bit more of a painterly um, storytelling. I think that's interesting how different publishing houses have you know, a certain aesthetic to their illustrations. So this is a book about numbers and this is adding, but it's also about um, exponential numbers. Like when you just keep getting numbers adding and adding, you get bigger and bigger. It's almost like a, you know, trying to get kids to understand because it gets abstract, like what, like what does it mean when the number's really big? And this is be a good book to pair with how much is a million or how many is in a million. That seems to be like the iconic book about de defining very large numbers. I forget the exact author and illustrator, but I'll put it in the down box. But, um, it's just great to have um, a visual. The next one is Cat's Egg. And that is by Arpatha Carthen Kenyon, um, illustrated by Christine Castle. And I'm guessing from the illustration style, this is a Lantana uh, book, but let's just check. I could be wrong. And no, I am wrong. It is by Karate Tales Company. Um, and so this looks like it might be Indian or translated? I'm not quite sure. Um, but it seems to be a story of a cat and dog. It looks like the cat's trying to guard, the dog's trying to guard the egg and the cat's trying to eat the egg or take the egg. It's some kind of you know, fighting over egg story. Almost like a modern folk tale. Um, so anyway, it's the dog and cat are getting along in the end, but you know, it is a, uh, a story about uh, this egg. Well, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll end this video on this book. Thank you again for sending me this, these books. Um, Myrick and Myrick Marketing and Media and just have a few more to go and thank you all for watching.